I find myself so often in environments where people really want the fact that I do these public space works, which I'm very passionate about. They want that to mean that I'm against the concert hall. And that's not true. I love the concert hall. These pieces are an affirmation. They are not a rejection. And that's really, really important to me. Um, I still have more to affirm outside the concert hall. There's a lot to affirm outside the concert hall. Um, and they, they come out of the fact that I'm a very urban person. Um, I've been, I think, in my life healed by city life. Like, if I've gone through difficult times in my life, one of the things that I always know I can do to fall in love with humanity again is to just walk around the city. I've had this experience in San Francisco where I grew up, in New Haven where I was in school, in New York where I've lived my whole adult life, Boston, Berlin, all the cities where I immerse myself. There is another thing. There's another thing besides reading. There's another thing besides collaboration. And that's urban life. That's super important to me. First of all, the reason I got into vocal music was really more because I had been a literature major and because of my relationship to language. It had very little to do with the fact that I was a singer. I was kind of a singer because, you know, I had played all these instruments, but I didn't have enough money to buy them. You know, your voice is free, and I had to make a living, and I was singing. I had always sung, and I, it, it was almost accidental, in a way. Um, how I became a professional singer was, was almost accidental. So I never thought of myself, certainly, you know, because of the kind of singing that I was doing for, not just for Philip, but for Toby Twining, who actually hired me even, even before Philip Glass did. <clears throat> A lot of these people that I was, you know, these composers, my music is not like that, and I don't use the voice that way so much in my own music. So I wasn't really the right soloist for my music anyway. I wouldn't have hired myself. I would have hired someone else. So that was the one thing. And then another thing is that I'm also a collaborator. I mean, I really love working with performers, you know, and other people. And I, I just love to have the creative process be about getting to know others. And it's just not that, you know, that, that process is less interesting for me if it's just me getting to know me some more. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. There's a really specific thing that happens at the end of the Airfield Broadcasts piece. There's a group, a small group of people that start playing this little, very dancey phrase. Most of the other groups around them come in and start joining in with them. Then there's some other group shows up and interrupts them and they all stop. But what you didn't realize was while this whole big party was going on, the original people who started playing that little dancey thing, they snuck away. This is exactly, I think, the poetry. There's something so beautiful about that. But that's also kind of what I do too. <laughs> like I want to go somewhere and I start a party and then get the party going, you know, whatever. And then it goes. And then well, when the party's at its fullest, I like to sneak away and start another party somewhere else. <laughs> so, and I wrote it into the piece. I didn't realize I did that, but I got that image like just when you asked that. I don't know why that is. I find that beautiful. There's something so beautiful about that. Leaving a party at its height, it's like, heartbreakingly beautiful and then you go and do something you know you go somewhere else that's my role I start fires you know and then I leave <laughs>